them. So there's two main kinds of mixtures. <clears throat> and they're called the homogeneous mixture and the heterogeneous mixture. So I don't want to write a big definition here. I just want to point out to you that something that you already know. You know, homo means the same and hetero means different. So when you have a homogeneous mixture, all it means is the mixture is uniform. And I'm not even going to write anything else. You could write a long definition, you know, a homogeneous mixture is a mixture of two or more substances that are uniform throughout in a composition. I mean, you could do all that, but just know that the idea of a, of a homogeneous mixture is a uniform mixture. So what do you think a heterogeneous mixture is? It's non-uniform. So for instance, if I take sand and I don't shake it up, you know, maybe I just take dirt, put it on the bottom and some rocks and put it on the top. I don't really shake it up very much. It's still a mixture. Maybe I shake it a little bit. But if I take samples from different parts of that container, I'm going to get a slightly different composition throughout because I didn't shake it very well. So that's a heterogeneous mixture. A heterogeneous mixture is any mixture that's non-uniform, right? And then, of course, you can contrast that with a situation where you take dirt, you take some sand, put it in a bucket, shake it, shake it, shake it, put it in a machine that shakes it for like two hours. And then if you take it out, if you sample any little part of that container, you're going to find the same com composition of the sand, the dirt, whatever it is that's in there. And that is a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous meaning uniform. Or all the same. All the same throughout is what that means, basically. And all of these solutions we're talking about, like water, salt water, sugar water, chemical solutions, things like that, those are all homogeneous mixtures. Because once you dissolve something down and break it down, it makes its way throughout the entire solution in a uniform way. So I'm going to put up here solutions. And this is the main reason why we're talking about mixtures anyway, because we talk a lot about chemistry that happens in solutions. Even in this class, we're going to do that a lot in water solutions, and those are homogeneous mixtures. All right? So now what I'd like to do, now that we have the, the basic idea for the, the definition now, which you can see there's not much to it, is we want to answer a couple of questions. So here what we're going to do is I'm going to give you uh, the whatever it is we're talking about, and we're going to ask ourselves and answer the question, is it a homogeneous mixture, is it a heterogeneous mixture, or is it a pure substance? Which would mean that basically it's not a mixture at all. So let's go through the list here. Problem number one is rice pudding. Rice pudding. So that's a dish, you know, it's got rice, it's got, you know, milk in there, it's got other things. Is that a heterogeneous mixture, a homogeneous mixture, or is it a pure substance? Well, it can't be a pure substance, so is it heterogeneous or homogeneous? Now, you may say, well, it depends on how well you mix it and all that, but I guess what I'm trying to say is don't, don't try to overthink the problem. Rice pudding is not mixed in an industrial mixer to make sure that it's absolutely uniform. So it's probably going to be heterogeneous because you're probably going to have clumps of rice over here, clumps of, you know, of milk and other things that make it non-uniform. So it's probably going to be heterogeneous. So for the rice pudding, we're going to say hetero. Genius. Okay. Problem number two, or part B. Okay. What about seawater? You go to the beach, you take a sample of seawater, and you measure the salt content, the mineral content of the seawater that's dissolved in the seawater. And then you go five meters down the way, take another bucket, and measure them. Of course, there'll be slight differences, but they'll more or less be uniform. Because the salt and the minerals that are in the seawater, because it's in a mobile solution like that, all of those dissolved substances are pretty uniformly distributed. They're broken down microscopically, and they're uniformly distributed. In general, if it's a solution of any kind, you can pretty much say it's homogeneous. So seawater, we're going to say, is homogeneous solution, or homogeneous mixture. Right? All right, next, what about magnesium? And what I mean by magnesium, I mean, on the periodic table, on the left, Mg is magnesium, it's a metal. Is that a homogeneous mixture? a heterogeneous mixture, or is that a pure substance? Well, magnesium atoms, they're not mixed with anything else. They're, they are just, they're pure substance. And not only that, they're, they're a unique atom on the periodic table. So magnesium is a pure substance. Okay. 
And part D, crushed ice. Is crushed ice a mixture of any kind? Well, ice is made of water molecules, H2O. It's not mixed with anything. Ice looks different than liquid water, but it's still made of these molecules, which are all basically identical. So there's really nothing to mix because there's nothing else mixed unless it's something you've mixed in with your ice. If it's pure ice, just because it's crushed, it's not a mixture of any kind. It is still a pure substance. So we're gonna say pure substance. All right, same story, different day. We're going to go to problem two. Uh, I'm going to do, we're going to determine which of the following is a pure substance, a homogeneous mixture, heterogeneous mixture. So it's just another problem, but similar kind of deal. First one, distilled water. Now I know we really haven't talked about distillation yet, but distilled uh, water is water that you boil. The vapor comes off the water, you cool it down, and it drips into another container, and it's pure because all of the things that were dissolved in the water, they're left behind when you boil it. Only the water is floating up in the air and coming down. All of the gunk or salt or minerals or whatever that was in the water, it doesn't go up and, and over uh, to the new container. It is left behind. So distilled water is a pure substance. It's a compound because it's H2O, which is a molecule. So we're using some of the same words that we've now learned, but it's a pure substance. So we'll say, for problem number two here, A, it's a pure substance. And in this case, because it's water, and we know water's a molecule, we know it's also a compound. Because water is H2O, and we know that compounds are molecules where we have different elements, H and O, hydrogen and oxygen. All right, after distilled water, we're gonna talk about gasoline. Is gasoline a mixture? Is it a pure substance? Uh, and if it's a mixture, what kind of mixture is it? Well, gasoline is a complex animal. It's, it's an organic uh, hydrocarbon molecule, which we'll talk about later. It just means it has hydrogen and carbons and other things in there. But gasoline is not just a pure thing. It's got other additives, sometimes ethanol, which is another chemical, sometimes other things that are in the gasoline to help your engine run you know, better. And so it's not a pure substance. It is a mixture. And what kind of mixture is it? Well, everything's dissolved. And so just like any solution, it is a homogeneous mixture. Home, so gasoline is a homogeneous mixture. Okay. All right. What is part C? Beach sand. Beach sand. So beach sand is sand that has been deposited and kind of built up over a long period of time. It has not been put in a machine. It has not been mixed thoroughly. So you expect that if you sample the sand in one part of the beach and you go down the way and you sample the sand in another part of the beach, it's probably not going to have exactly the same composition. So if you're sure that it's really, really mixed well, you could say it's a homogeneous mixture, but really beach sand is probably not very uniform. So it's probably a heterogeneous mixture. So we'll say heterogeneous. heterogeneous mixture. Part D, wine. What is wine? Well, it is not a pure substance. I mean, it comes from grapes, but it's got alcohol in it. It's got other additives and flavors. It's a solution. It's it, Nothing settles out of wine. So, But it is a mixture of lots of different things uh, that are, uh, you know, that in the process of making wine in there. And everything is uniformly mixed. You know, if you sample the top of the bottle or the bottom of the bottle, you're going to get the same concentration. So that is a homogeneous mixture. Okay, homogeneous mixture. And the last one of this type, what is it? Air, so the air we breathe. So you know there's oxygen in the air, right? But you know there's nitrogen, there's other trace gases, there's many, many gases that are in the air. And yes, we do have the weather and it blows everything around, but more or less the air is pretty uniform. If you sample the air here and the sample one block away, it's gonna be pretty darn close to the same because everything is mixing all the time in there. So it is a mixture and we're gonna call it a homogeneous mixture because it's uniformly in uh, composition. So homogeneous. Okay, homogeneous mixture. All right, now I have a few pictures on the board and I want you to tell me is the, uh, what is the phase, solid, liquid, or gas? Uh, what is the composition? Is it a pure substance or a mixture? And also whether it consists of an element or a compound. So here in the first picture here, we have 
two different colors. Nothing is bonded together. So we have two different elements, right? There are no compounds or, or molecules or anything here. And it looks like everything is kind of bouncing around the container up high and low and kind of filling the whole volume of the container. So we know it's a gas. And because we have two different elements and they're in the container mixed around, we know it's a mixture. So we know the phase of this thing is a gas. We know it's a mixture of two different elements, right, of two elements. And we know it's elements because nothing is connected or bonded together here into a molecule. All right, problem number two. Here's this container. Is it a solid liquid gas? Is it a mixture? Is it a pure element? Let's describe this thing. Well, we have all of the atoms kind of at the bottom packed extremely tightly. So this looks like a solid, right? And also, all of the atoms are a pure substance here because it's the same color. There's no differences or anything like that. Everything's the same color. So it's a single element on the periodic table. So pure substance. Right? And uh, because there's no variation in color, and that means it's basically an element. So these are all little individual elements, like maybe sodium atoms are packed together, or aluminum atoms are packed together in a solid like this. All right, now here's our last one. We have a container here. Now we have some molecules going on here because we have two different colors bonded together. Is it a solid, liquid, or a gas? Well, it looks like a gas because everything's kind of floating around there and kind of bouncing around the containers. It looks like a pure substance because these are bonded together, but this is identical to this, and this is identical to this, and this is identical to this. So it's not a mixture uh, because they're bonded together. So this would be like carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, and we still say that that's a pure substance. Yes, that substance is consisting of, of two different things, but it's still a pure substance. Right? And uh, is it a compound or not? Yes, it's a compound. Which remember, a compound is a type of molecule where basically have two different elements stuck together. So if it was two different oxygens together, they would both be blue. But we have two different colors, so we know it's two different elements together. All right, so in this lesson, we covered the idea of mixtures in chemistry. And you might say, why do we care about mixtures? Well, the main reason is because solutions are a type of mixture, a homogeneous mixture. And we have solutions, we're gonna do reactions and solution constantly, and then when you get into organic chemistry, you know, a lot of those reactions are also happening in a solution also. So solutions are really, really important in chemistry. That's why we covered here. Make sure you understand the definitions. Make sure you can solve these problems. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue to build your skills. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.